If you're doing DIY work around your house, there's just no getting around it. You're going to have to be able to figure out some angles. And today, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to be using a tape measure, we're going to be using a tea bevel, and we're going to be using a saw set pro, and we're going to be using a four foot level. These four tools combined should be able to help you figure out any angle that you need to figure out. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Hi everybody, I'm Jim Dirdorf and this is Detroit DIY. If you haven't subscribed yet, I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd consider doing so. Let's get going. The first angle we're going to work with is this one right here. I've set up this mock wall and I have this piece of scrap paneling. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this angle on the bottom of it so that it sits on here nice and perfect. Unfortunately, it won't reach the top of the wall, but that's okay. Typically, the top of the wall would be your goal, but for this demonstration, this is what I have, so this is what we're going to use. You would still use the same principles for the measurements to get this angle. Let's get some measurements. Because we have this little short area right here that's going to be flat to reach the end of our wall, we're going to go ahead and take that measurement first. And that is going to be three and a quarter inches. So we just want to mark that out right here on the bottom side of our paneling. Now it doesn't matter if this is paneling, if this is drywall, plywood, it doesn't matter. It's all the same. So now we've got that mark on here. Now the next thing we need to do is to determine how far up we're going to be able to go. Like I say, typically you would be the top of the wall or this would be the top of the wall. But in this instance, we're going 17 inches. So we're going to mark this up at 17 inches. Now that we have our 17 inch mark, we're going to take our level and we're going to run it up here and we're going to get it nice and level so that we can mark these other two studs where the top of this is going to come to. And this is the only way we can do this. With our level, nice and level across here, I'm going to go ahead and mark the tops of these other two studs. This is the stud that we're going to land on right here. We're not going to make it to the end. And what we want to do is mark this stud right in the middle. Now the next thing we need to do is go across our level line so that our tape measure is right where it needs to be and get our next measurement to the center mark which would be 31 and 3 quarters so we need to take that 31 and 3 quarters and go ahead and transfer it down to our workpiece. after we get the 31 and 3 quarters marked on one side we're going to go ahead and mark it on the other side now we'll take a straight edge such as our level and complete that line Now we're going to go ahead and scribe this line all the way across. If you're cutting paneling like this, it's important that you mark and cut from the back side to prevent tear out. Now that we've got it cut to length. So now when we get this measurement, which is four and five eighths of an inch, you want to make sure that the hook on your tape measure is right here on this very edge where the paneling is going to sit. And you also need to remember that this is the top side of your workpiece. So we want to measure from the top down four and five eighths, not from the bottom of it up, but from the top down. Let's get that marked out. We want to mark that right here near the edge at four and five eighths. Now we want to lay our straight edge across from our first mark that we put on for the flat area right to this mark. Now you want to make certain that the mark is almost covered up that you can just see where they're at before you scribe your line. So 
So now we have successfully replicated this angle. Let's get it cut off. Alright, let's see how that fits. And there we have it. Just not a bad looking fit at all. And in most cases this would get trimmed anyway. And that is the next angle we're going to figure out. So now let's say we want to trim this out. We want our adjacent piece of trim that's down here into the floor to blend perfectly into this one. For that, we're going to use the miter saw. And now we are going to need to know the angle. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And it's fairly simple. We're going to be using a T-bubble. And the T-bubble is just simply an angle finding type device. It is not going to tell you the angle, but it will replicate it. So we're going to lay the base of the T-bubble right here on our flat surface. And we're going to lay the metal portion down on the board. And we're going to tighten this little thumb nut. We're going to make sure that it's laying on there properly. Then we're going to bring that over to our miter protractor. This is a SawSet Pro. You, I'll put a link down in the description to their website and you can get one of these for yourself. It has double miters on one side and it has single miters on the other side. And it is designed to be used in conjunction with a T-bubble. Now as you can see there's a little raised portion on it right here. And what we want to do is set our T-bubble in here and slide that raised portion over until it bumps into the edge of our angle. And then if we read right over here, it'll give us our angle, which is 18 and a half. So we need to set our miter saw at 18 and a half for a double miter. And just so you don't accidentally cut this on the wrong angle, just kind of take your pencil and, and just in general, draw a line on here that would be somewhat the correct angle so that when you get it in the saw you can look at that and know that you need to cut it this way and not this way it'll save you some time and some mistakes let's get this cut So we're here at the miter saw and I just want to cut this a little bit long so that I have enough for the other piece, my cutoff, to be a little bit long. This is our first 18 and a half degree cut. And now we're going to set the saw to the other side and do the same thing. And with that, we should wind up with the perfect double miter for that. So with our double miter cut, let's see what we got going on here. And there we have it. As you can see, we have a nice, clean, crisp line. Everything fits just the way that it should fit. And our profile lines up perfectly. These miter protractors will not steer you wrong. You learn how to use it. It's not that difficult. These are a wonderful thing to have. Again, I've put the link down in the description to their website. All right, I've given you two different ways to figure out angles. Angles do not have to be intimidating. You just need to know what you're doing and sometimes that makes all the difference in the world. So a tape measure, a level, a miter protractor, and a T-bevel can sometimes just make a world of difference. Stop you from pulling your hair out, the proper use of them, read them right, make sure you double check everything before you cut, and you're going to wind up with some fantastic results. That's all we got for this time. If you'd like to get an amazing shirt like this, I've put a link down in the description to our store. I'd greatly appreciate it if you would consider helping the channel out by purchasing something. And remember to always respect the power of your power tools. 
If you enjoyed yourself, click on one of those two videos that are going to pop up next to me, and we'll see you soon.